Good morning, everybody. Welcome to CUA, and uh, we're we're here this morning. We uh, I was mentioning in the first service it was weird when I was a kid and I started helping out with the worship team, and the pastor would talk about how you know it's we're raising up the next generation of worship leaders and everything, and now I'm the old guy up here saying that with my son back on the drums here. So want to thank him for joining with us this morning, and uh, my daughter wanted to, but I think she's just a little tired today. Hey, Leah? A little tired, so that's okay. We'll take a break. But we're here to worship God, and it doesn't matter how many are in the house of God. We're all here to worship. We Just be one of us or a hundred of us. It doesn't matter. We're here to do the same thing, and that's worship God. Amen. So I'll ask you to sing along with us this morning. Come to the well, it never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. loves the world, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so this next song is uh, old church choir. Uh, I know Jake has sang it a few times, and uh, I think it's a great song. It's, I was reading Psalm 33 this week. I was actually starting with our daily bread, and then that kind of led me into uh, a different devotion after that. So I love those devotions that kind of go down a, a new, new road, and you start learning some things. And Psalm 33 spoke a lot to me this week about worshiping God and singing a new song to him and it's not necessarily it has to be a new song but a song that you sing in your heart in, in a new way a way to present your love to God in a new manner and uh, 
That's, uh, that's how I feel that God was speaking to me this week. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning. Lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can't lose it. Well, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing and I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. In the valleys that I wander, turn to mountains I can't climb. You are with me, never leave me. Cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Till you find that gospel because he's all you'll ever need all you'll ever need clap your hands and stomp your feet you find that gospel because he's all you'll ever need all you'll ever need now i've got an old church choir singing in my soul i've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful and I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Stop 
This morning, God, we just invite you into this church this morning, God, to be with us, that we can open up our hearts and worship and grow in you. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Boy, that was good singing. Right? Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And so I just, uh, I got a few announcements, and I don't know, Denise, you could come out, and I think they swing that camera. You could, you know how to throw up the announcements first. Denise is doing this for me. Put the announcements up on here first, up at the top, and uh, Nicole couldn't stay today, and we'll see if we can get them up there, and uh, Nicole is watching you, so you know. No, I'm just joking. There we go. She got them up there. You're going to see some announcements roll through, and you can you can just pull that camera down slowly and put it up there. And we've got uh, some of our Bible studies started. I know that there's one Monday night uh, that's going to be four weeks called Choosing Joy. If you're not part of a study, you need to go uh, be part of that one. There's also, um, I think there's a men's one Tuesday night. And uh, that's going to roll up there on the screen also. There is another one um, Wednesday morning uh, with ladies. And then there's another one on Thursday night with men. And then uh, I'm going to do one online on Zoom when God's spirit moves. And so that will be on Zoom. So if you're interested, you need to let me know. Send me a text or an email or something like that. And uh, that can be... Um, you can be part of that Zoom one. It's a good one. Uh, it's the guy in Brooklyn, Tabernacle. It's, um, oh my goodness, his name is gone. Can we remember his name, anyone? He's at Brooklyn Tabernacle. He's the pastor. It's gone. But it's good anyway. It's a praying church. When God's spirit move is going to be that study. And that's going to be Monday night. So I'm going to start it maybe not this Monday, but next the next Monday and it'll run, I know the videos are like 25 minutes, and then we'll have some discussion for another 30, so it'll be, it's probably going to be between 6 to, uh, to 7 on Monday nights. I'm going to offer that one also in Cardinal, and I know that there's another study happening in Cardinal now, uh, in for Eastern, we got some people that travel in from as far as Cornwall, so we're going to offer a Bible study over there in that area also, and so there's also tonight... There is a youth discipleship program that happens here at the church. You'll see it roll up there also. And I think on Thursdays there's a prayer meeting. Now, I do have a prayer meeting tonight at Cardinal Church. And what we do at that prayer meeting is we've mixed and mingled music with prayer. And we will be praying for our region. And so that's tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. And I think uh, that's pretty well all the announcements. And if you have an offering or you want to give this morning, uh, you can just put it back in the offering uh, plate. And uh, we're just going to go into a time of worship and, uh, and just exalt the Lord this morning. Amen. So let's stand together and let's worship together. just love that we can still come together and even though everything's going on since March, it's been forever, that we can still see each other and uh, distantly and uh, just worship together. And the God that we serve is still the same God 
thank goodness for that. He's still in charge of all of this. So uh, we can just trust him that this won't last forever. There will be an end at some time. But uh, until then, we'll just continue to praise and worship him. So just, just join me as we praise our Lord and Father.
without hope and no place to begin. And your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested in my life began. And Ash was redeemed only
and, uh, and yesterday I had a guy come and uh, he removed some stumps at Cardinal Church uh, for us. And um, you know, something that I noticed that sometimes a, a little tree would like, they would come out of the stump. And, and you guys probably know the text, I, I think it's Isaiah. It's Isaiah 11, I think, in verse 1. It, it talks about, like, uh, Jesus coming out of the stump of Jesse, just a, a little sprout. But, but uh, it's, it's interesting. So we had the stumps removed yesterday. And I'm going to guess, but I'm going to say that within the next couple years, I'll notice a tree growing, even sometimes from the roots. They'll come up out of the ground of that tree. It's, it's weird. And, and, but I want to relate it to us because sometimes... We feel, don't you ever feel like you're reduced back to a stump? You can sit down if you want. Sometimes our lives feel like so much pressure that's going on and there don't seem to be all these leaves and all these branches and all this beauty. It, it don't seem like that. It seems like our lives have been reduced down to so much. And, and um, But if we could picture just for a second, and Steve, maybe I'd have you sing that again. If you could just picture out of the stump of Jesse came like a twig. And the reason that was out of Jesse, because Jesse was David's father, and that's the reign of the kingdom. And the, the reason that it was a stump, because when it comes to Jesus Christ, everything else that's life is reduced to a stump. But I'm telling you that wherever we are today, whatever we're feeling, whatever we're going through, as much of it makes us feel like I'm telling you that there's roots and everything like that. Well, we need to be rooted into Jesus this morning. We need to trust him. We need to trust him. Like it's, it's, it's not Seaway's freedom. It's not, it's not the church's freedom. It's, it's, it's not like because we came from a certain family. Like, I'm so encouraged. I miss my dad so much this time of the year because hunting starts and I'm out in the bush and he used to take me. I, I, I was probably just the her age. I don't know how old, how old is this? She's eight years. My dad used to, we used to cross a log on one brook and my dad would put me up on his back to walk across. I was such small when I learned things about hunting and, and all that stuff. And, uh, but I'm telling you, we might, we might depend upon our past. But I want you to know sometimes we just got to trust Jesus. We got to give him everything that we're going through. And uh, something that I miss, and we're not going to break any rules, I promise. But sometimes, and I have the privilege because I got the key to the church, and I can come to the church every day. But sometimes I just need to stand at the altar. And uh, I'm for obeying every rule. And so this morning, if you come, I want you to just make sure your distance. But if you want to spend a moment at the front, you, you can come over here. And I know we got the cameras on. We're working on that right now of, of doing a video when we have altar calls because we believe it is essential and that some of our folk need to just stand at the altar before the Lord for a few moments. And, and just, it's almost like we can peel some stuff off. It's almost like we can render some stuff. It's almost like we can build something and say, God, I, my life is like it's reduced to a stump. I'm feeling like only the roots, but I'm rooted in you. And I know that there's a branch that can come forth and it can bear much fruit. And so this morning, I would ask you to use the sides, aisles to come and stand over there. The, the camera pretty well just gets the platform. But if you need to come, Steve, could you do that one again that you just done? And, and we're, we got time, right? And so if you need to just stand for a few moments and give some stuff to the Lord, we want to open that up to you this morning as we sing this song. Don't in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost me 
difficult today not being able to go and maybe lay hands on people. I think it's essential. I, I think it's difficult not to be able to like anoint people with oil. But I tell you what is important outside of that this morning is that we would lay our burdens on Jesus. He said, cast my your cares upon me. Right? That's what he said. Cast all your cares upon me. So let's pray. So Father, this morning... We uh, surrender everything that's going on in our lives. And we just give it to you today. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that your presence is real, that your power is real, and that you're in this room to minister to us today. I just ask you right now, Lord, that for those that came and you know the need better than we do, Lord, you know everything connected. You know all the feelings. You all know all the emotions. You know all the mental stress. You know everything that each individual that's going through. Whether they came to the front or not, you know everything. But Lord, today, in the name of Jesus, and for all those that are online also, 
Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, may you minister today to folk and meet them right where they are. In Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. May God bless you today and thanks for coming to the altar. i got to get my Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're at another church. And uh, uh, not literally. We're at Seaway. But we are dealing with another church in the book of Revelation. And uh, another tough name. Um, I uh, Boy, when I run across some of the names in the Bible... Like, I think, I wonder if it's real. Like, like they put letters together sometimes that I don't think they fit together. But, but I tell you, that's something that I've learned. That if I'm reading the Bible and I come across something that I disagree with, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's me that's wrong. <laughs> it's not the Bible, right? It's, it's, a, it's a powerful book. And um, I need to make whatever adjustments is necessary to fit my life within that, that book. And so uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse four, or 18, sorry. Um, Denise, you want to help me with the pronouncing that this? It's a Tyra, Tyra? What? Thyra, Tyra. Thyra, Tyra. Wow. That's the church. Uh, guys, it, what is so crazy here, it's the longest letter that was written to the seven churches. So there's ten churches that's probably uh, connected around here. And uh, there's seven letters that was sent out to these churches. And this church is the smallest church. Uh, it's the least important also. In the sense that, but if you think about it, how many here in the room you ever feel insignificant? Like, come on, me. Like, hey. And so, or like we don't feel like we're important. Or we wonder about our giftings or our commitment. Well, like in the midst, of, I, I'm sure that is true of you that it is of me. That sometimes God needs to rebuke us and discipline us. But the reality is that God still cares enough about the smallest. We've got to see that in this context also this morning. Now, this town was known for its abundant crop. Sue, you would love that probably. Like it, it, had, it had all kinds of stuff that you could bake with, right? So you could go there. They were also known for some of their marketplaces. One of their highlights was this like purple dye. And uh, uh, I don't want to center you out this morning, but there's one lady here that might just have a little bit of purple dye in her ear this morning. And that might have came from this town, right? And, and so, uh, but it is amazing. Now, I think it's important for us to read it, simply because it does state in Revelation that if you read it, eat it, and listen to it, you're blessed. And so let's do that this morning. So we'll go along, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And to the angel of the church in Tyra, Tyra, ah, writes, The Son of Man, who has like a blaze of fire, and his feet are like burnished bronze, says this, I know your deeds and your love and faith and service and perseverance. My goodness, that sounds good. Wouldn't you like to be that person? <laughs> right? Like, that's unreal. And that your deeds of late are greater than at first. But I have something against you, that you have tolerated the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bond servants astray, so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, and she does not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of, of her deeds. 
And I will kill her children. Thank God is like. And I will kill her children with pestilence. And all the churches will know that I am E. Listen to this one. Who searches the minds and hearts. Has they called them. Oh, sorry, I jumped the verse. And I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. But I say to you, the rest who are in Thyatira, who do not owe this teaching, who have not known the deep things of Satan, as they call them, I place no other burden on you. Nevertheless, I like that word, Nevertheless, right? What you have, hold fast until I come. He who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. And he shall rule with the rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. I think the first thing I want to look at is the individual that's giving counsel. Right? And I find it quite interesting that Jesus' eyes are as blazing fire and his feet are like polished bronze. I think his eyes represents like his all-knowing. Like, you must know and understand that Jesus Christ sees everything, like, on the planet. I don't know how they can do that, but they know every deed, every act that's taking place at once, anywhere, all through the planet. And so when you look at the counselor of this text, you need to understand that Jesus Christ don't only like see it all, he knows everything that is going to take place on the planet. Now, when it comes to these polished bronze feet, I want you to see the all-powerful Jesus. So not only does he know everything, see everything, he is also all-powerful that will swiftly move and judge anything and everything that is against God or that is evil and don't, um, don't represent what God represents. And so you've got this Jesus who can swiftly pursue to tread upon anything. And, and so within the text that we read today, Jesus says, listen, I've given Jezebel the opportunity to repent. And so now I'm going to come quickly again, and I'm going to tread upon these things that should never be in the church. Now, I want, you to, I want to say this to you, because sometimes when we read a passage like this, we think, well, man, the world is wicked, isn't it? Like we would come to the conclusion and say, well, there's some bad things happening. You need to see that this was also being tolerated in God's hands. And so we need to be careful what we tolerate. Let me, let me tell you what he commended them for. He, like this, this floors me. He says, I commend you for your work, your love, your faith, your patience, your perseverance. I mean, I mean and, and what, he, what was so cool about the verse, and maybe if you got that verse up there, Denise, what is so cool about this verse when it comes to your deeds, your love, your faith, your servants, your perseverance, what is so cool is he said, as of late, they've increased. Like, I don't, maybe you're different than me, but like, would you have given this church like a gold star? <laughs> like, but guys, you guys are like, and we might feel today like in Prescott, in a little church at Seaway, and we might feel like somewhat insignificant and small, and we might feel like we've done some good stuff in the sense of the community and 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 have impacted and all that stuff. But the reality is. Like, God commended them for the things that he, they did. I mean, these, these virtues were so powerful, right? The first two were like these motives. Your, your motives are right. The second two were like your deeds are like 
impeccable in the sense, I mean, love for others have produced a service, right? That is so faith in Christ assures that your, your perseverance, we've got this faith and we're, we're committed to him. And so Jesus is praising them for their faithfulness. He really is. And he is so encouraged that it is increasing. But I could tell you that we can live in a world like that and we can feel the pressure of somebody coming near us and saying, but listen, there is an area that you need to grow in. Or in Jesus' case, he says, I got something against you. Right? And then, then like we, we at least need to continue. I mean, come on. If I was praising you about your deeds, if I was praising you about your work, if I was praising you about your patience, wouldn't you perk up a little bit? Now, when the statement comes out, but I got something against you, you just want to like start sliding down in the chair. <laughs> say, like, that's not, but guys, I tell you that something that I have learned is, listen, not only should our strengths be mentioned, but our weaknesses should be pointed out sometimes. That God, that we can get past it, that we can grow beyond it, that we can become better people on the planet. And so this is what happens here. I mean, there's this lady, Jezebel, and now you might know the story of Jezebel in the Old Testament. There was a Jezebel, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit, that was married to Ahab. And Ahab was a king, and Jezebel was a spirit-driven person, but not a true spirit of God, a false individual that sold havoc. I mean, she would have had most of the prophets killed in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, there was once, if you can remember... After Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal and fire came down from heaven. I don't know if you bet any of that happened this morning or yesterday or last few days. The guy just seen this miraculous thing. And you know what he does then? It says that Jezebel was going to try to go after him. And Elijah ran away and hid away from him. That's this Je now. Now we've got another Jezebel. Some commentaries say that this prophet is that she may have been married to the bishop. You know when it says a message to the the angel of the church of such and such. Well, that angel really is the bishop or the pastor or the leader or the spokesman of that church. And and some commentaries have suggested. I don't lean that way, but some commentaries suggested that she might have been like the pastor's wife for that church. But I'm telling you, they're pushing that to have that proven. But whoever she was, she had a great influence in the community. And she was a false prophetess because she promoted immorality and she promoted offering sacrifice to gods. Right? 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 And so, so, so what, what happened here is that uh, she managed to come up strategically with some plans to really impact the Christian church. Let me tell you a little bit about that. I, I don't know how to pronounce this one. I should have asked you before. It's G-U-I-L-D. Guild. Guild. So that would have been like the union that we would deal with today. Okay? So, so it's a work great reunion a union and so they would have had like union meetings or guild meetings and all the people would have had to come together and they would have had a a membership like banquet for anybody that was part of the day but at that banquet any workers and and you got to realize that there were not only people that were maybe not in the church that had marketplace shops that sold some kind of uh, lineage in the sense, or, 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 or linen in the sense of dyed because of the beauty. I, I, mean, see, I see you got a 
purple shirt on today, so you would have you would have fit in the marketplace with your purple sweater, especially if that was the dye. I'm, I'm sure it would have streamed in through some of their clothes. But the reality is, not only was there community people, but there were also Christians that had marketplaces. And if I know best, because if you think of it when it comes to like sometimes senior zones, when it comes to hospitals, some of these ideas have come from the Christian culture. And so I can just see it that Christians advanced and, and not to put anybody else down. I say we're equal across the board. But the reality is the Christians in that day was really challenged because in order to sell their product, they would have had to go to the guild meeting or the membership meeting or the union meeting. And if they didn't eat the food that was offered to idols, I got a feeling that they would be pointed out. And there would be a lack of sales the next week. you got to see this. And that was the tactics of Jezebel. Not only would she intertwine in the sense of that union meeting, but in the mix she put in the ingredients also in morality. Not a lot different than back in Ahab's day. I often think, when I think of that story, I think of the eunuchs. That, and a eunuch is a man that is fruitless in the sense of reproducing anything, in the sense of children and that. And uh, some men were born like that back in Ahab's day. And uh, I'm sure it's true of today. And some, it was actually placed up on them because they were close to the queen. And, and in this case, they were close to Jezebel. And Jezebel had a whole bunch of eunuchs around her. But when it comes to these sins in morality, or when it comes to the sins of offering sacrifice to idols, I want to say here today, whoever it is, male or female, we become fruitless. We really do. When we surrender to the sins of Jezebel, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, we become fruitless. Right? And it's true even of this one here. But, like, you've got to ask the real question. Like, it, 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 would be, it, would be, it would be wrong for me today to not ask the question, what was Christians supposed to do? Like, here they are. If they did not conform, they were out of a job. And, and, and I got a feeling sometimes even in our culture, there's demands put upon people that if we didn't compromise, we'd lose our job. But at least God focused on it this morning and says, listen, I got something against you. You've got to fix some areas. I think even in the midst of churches in these days, like there's such a demand to compromise. I'm telling you that for the individual that would endure to the end, believing that the Bible stands, that this is our guidebook, for not just us, but to display Christ to a dark and a dying world. I don't think that we need to be politically correct. I actually think that we ought to be biblically correct, politely. I really do. But the Bible needs to stand. I mean, we've seen churches... Mainline churches, even in our culture, there's tons of compromise. And in the years to come, there could be things pressed and pushed upon us and, and that would challenge our Bible beliefs. But I want you to know that we at Seaway and Cardinal, we need to be Bible-believing people. We need to stand with it. And if God is calling us out on something today, because as though we're online and somebody will watch this online, this message is for Seaway Christian Church and the folk that are here today. Now, if you are listening and I'm challenging you, then the word of God will not come back void. It should touch and impact 
your heart as well. I find it interesting that there's a warning mixed with this also. It says, unless they repent. Why repentance have been brought up a lot lately if you've been watching the live or you've been part of the service. I mean, what God does here or says he's going to do, he's going to take the prophet at Jezebel and from the bed of love, if I could say that, to the bed of sickness and affliction. And anybody that tolerates immorality or anybody that have tolerated the offering in this context because like you got to think that that business and that guy that was there, that Christian man that was selling some linen that was died so beautiful but needs to go to that human meeting, that union meeting. God is saying we can't compromise. We've got to stand strong. And there's going to be all kinds of issues come your way. And it might be best for me not to mention them this morning on air. But our faith is going to be tested. Our patience is going to be challenged. Our God is going to come into question. But you and I, we need to stand strong. And when we've done all, the scripture says we need to stand. We really do. Let me give you the counsel that Jesus puts out. He says, if you will endure, you'll be a ruler of, of nations. <laughs> a ruler of nations. Like he throws this word out here. I'll give you the morning, the brightest star in the sky. The one that shines, which is talking about Jesus. Jesus is the brightest light that will ever exist in the midst of a dark and down world. Jesus wants to bring light, love, and life to this world. And he says, listen, I'm going to give you that authority. I'm going to give you the authority to stand up. Okay, so let's be practical. So there's a guy sitting behind a booth. What's the name of this town again? The name of the town? Thyra Tyre. There's a guy sitting behind the booth. And he gets the message at church on Sunday. Listen, don't compromise anymore. I'm going to give you authority. Can I ask a question to all those that are online and those that are in the room? Have you taken the authority? We need to be people of authority. We, not, we ought not to be egotistic, walking into some room and commanding and demanding I'm telling you, it's the meek that inherit the earth. Not the weak. I'm saying the meek. It's the insignificant. Come on. It's the small. It's the small town. It's the, it's the small person. That God, God wants to give you authority. He really does. Okay, so let me ask a question and I'm going to close with this question. How far should I accept and adopt contemporary standards and practices? Big question. Let me say it again. How far should I accept and adopt contemporary standards and practices? I mean, come on. On one hand, the Christian faith must never be denied. Right? Everybody agree? Everybody online agree? We should never deny our Christian faith. But the reality is, too, we, we, we're in the world. We may not be of it. 
The Bible says like we're like, one translation, which is really like strange, it says like we're aliens, like, ah, you know, that's weird. But, but still, we're, we're passing through. We're, we're, we've got our, our like household kingdom spot is with Christ in heaven. So this world is temporary. And, 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 and so you know, like it is a quick dash from your birthday to your death date. And that dash that's in the middle sometimes is quick. But the reality is, and you need to see it today, we need to be part of society too. Come on, some people in this room, you are a member of a union, or you're a member of something, or you're connected somehow with society, and we ought to be. That is true. And let me say this statement this morning, and let me be clear with it. The cause of Christ is not served if Christians appear as groups of old-fashioned people, right? And, and, and that always are trying to retreat from the real world. Like, that's not who we are. We need to be in the world. You need to be in the world. Christian friend in the room and online today, you live in the same world with your neighbors. You do. And you face the same problems as your neighbors. Yes, you do. Well, let me say this, and I finish with this, and Steve, you can come on back up. If you are a Christian in the world, and your workplace or your surroundings or the culture that you've decided to connect with is causing you to compromise your faith, then you, as a Christian, needs to come up with a solution that that stops happening. Because Christ do not want us to compromise. He doesn't. And these sins are great, but on any level, we are his. And so this morning, let me encourage you to be a people that knows what God wants you to do, who he wants you to be, and where he wants you to go. And when you do, or when you go, or when you say, do it with authority and trust that God will look after you. Practical again, if one of the guys back in that church lost their job, because they wouldn't compromise, then my Bible says that God would supply all their needs. So don't compromise, but stand strong in God. Let's sing this last song. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade, but never enough. Then you came. Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. the God of the mountain is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me
So God, I just pray that today when we leave here, that you would speak to each one of our hearts. And even those that are viewing us online, God, you speak to our hearts. No one else can tell us what it is that we're compromising or, or that we're doing that's maybe against you. But you love us so much that you just want us to live better than that. And so God, I just ask you today that we would each one of us take a moment or a few moments alone with you and we would even look at this word so that we know that it is you speaking to us and that we would take what we're compromising and we would give it to you, God, and we would walk in freedom today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.